Do you struggle with speaking English fluently and confidently? Maybe you freeze up in conversations or spend too much time translating in your head. Well, you are not alone. But what if I told you in the next few minutes, I'll show you how to speak English spontaneously without any hesitation or fear. Welcome to my channel Fluency Goals. I am Mandeep, your English coach. And on this channel, I keep posting regular tips and tricks how to improve your English conversation. Stick with me to the end of this lesson because in the end, I'm going to share that bonus tip with you that is going to work like magic. Tip number one, stop translating in your head. Now, translating in your head is one of the biggest culprit which hampers your fluency. Yes, translations, translations from your native language to English language in your head is the biggest culprit and doesn't let you speak English spontaneously. I know it sounds tricky because you might have learned the language in a way of translation method. Now, if you even know the basic vocabulary, the basic action words and nouns and pronouns and sentence structures, you need to step up from translation method. Now, to begin with, what you can do is incorporate a few habits in your everyday life that will help you stop translating in your head and develop a spontaneous thinking ability. The ability to directly think in English and say what you want to say without the translations. Now, foremost thing is stop learning through translation method. Start grasping, learning, absorbing the language as it is. Now, developing a straight way thinking in English is very tricky, especially if it is your second language. Now, to do that, you first of all need absorption of language, complete absorption, complete immersion in language. And to begin with, start reading daily. There is no replacement of it, believe me. When you read, absorb the language, you start looking at the sentence structures, the various verbs and the nouns, pronouns. You grasp all the basic grammar, functional grammar that is needed to speak from the reading context directly. As opposed to listening, of course, you can argue that listening is as important as it is. I don't say it is not. But what happens is sometimes we listen and when we are listening, we are focusing more on the pronunciation, more on the intonation and the flow of sentences. And we don't pay much attention to the formation of sentences and the words that are used. Reading will help you immerse the context in a very relaxed manner at your own pace. Now, I don't say that immediately start reading very difficult text. Start from simpler text, texts that are your reading age. Reading age by reading age, I mean uh, the level of language that you are at. If you are a beginner, start reading beginner books and if you are an intermediate, step up your game a bit and start reading some complex text, eventually reaching up to the text of C1 and C2 level which are complex and involve complex sentences, complex vocabulary. But even if you become proficient English speaker, there is no replacement for reading. Reading will always enhance your vocabulary, your uh, language absorption. When you absorb the language through reading, you also start imagining certain parts of the text. Let's say you're reading a story, you'll imagine and then you start thinking eventually. It doesn't come immediately at the first, first instance only, but eventually over a period of time, the thinking starts developing. So instead of just learning how to translate this, you're directly reading and absorbing that language. So reading habit who's thinking in English. Now, the second tip that I have for you here is to build your 
core vocabulary core vocabulary the basic the important vocabulary that you are going to use in everyday language now here, again here there is one way of reading that i have already given you and it comes quite handy because there is repetitive repetitive use of the words that you will use in your everyday conversations or in your everyday basic english communication when you keep on coming across those words while reading the text they automatically get into your active vocabulary so you will not have to think much while speaking because they because you have been coming across these words every single day and they form an active vocabulary of your speech now the third tip here is immerse yourself in english media yes immerse yourself english media listen to podcasts conversational podcasts where two people three people are talking and listen how they are responding to certain questions and what is their tone what are their expressions and what kind of words are they using listen to simple podcast first pick out the topic of your interest so that you are hooked on to the conversation and watch movies with subtitles so that you pick up the syntax also watch a lot of english movies listen to english songs so this helps you hear the language in your natural context and before you know it you'll be picking up new phrases and expressions without even realizing it tip number 4 practice 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 now there are three ways to practice it you can practice with a partner if you have one you can practice with yourself or you can practice with ai I have a complete video on how to practice English speaking with AI using AI. Do check it out. It will give you tips how to practice English speaking and how to optimize the AI to start developing your speech. Now talking to an to an English speaking partner is obviously the best way to practice, but if you don't have one and you want to practice english by speaking to yourself it might sound odd at first to practice it with yourself how can you do that but there are various techniques that help you do that that is one trick here is mirror talk another is description of everyday routines third is pitch description fourth is argue with yourself now how do you argue with yourself now let me come to the first one here mirror talk mirror talk the name says it all you stand in front of a mirror and you talk to yourself start describing what is in your mind what are you thinking about the current scenario current political scenario the office situation or your goals and what are your plans start describing start talking to yourself and then you can argue with yourself as well so you put out a proposition this is what i am going to do this is this is my plan to do it and then you argue with yourself it is not going to work this way and it is going to work this way now this is the best option this is not the best option so you practice speaking with yourself this way so mirror talk arguing with yourself then pitch your description Now for this this is very important i really love this activity take a picture pick out any random picture you can pick it pick it out from a newspaper or from any magazine now start describing the picture what is happening in the picture how many people are there what is the backdrop and what do you think it is about and what the people might be discussing start describing all that you see in the picture this works really wonderful because you have to come up with new vocabulary new emotion then number 5 tip is to use filler phrases now many times we do not have a thought in our head and the time we are in conversation we tend to fumble and stutter stammer because there is a lack of thought in our head but instead of fumbling and using uh um, what you can do is you practice some filler phrases now filler phrases they give you time to think time to think about what you're going to speak so you can use the phrases like um, let me think over it that's a great question 
let me gather my thoughts on this and if you don't know anything to say you can bounce the question back to the speaker hmm that sounds interesting but i would like to know what are your thoughts on this you can check out my video on never get stuck in conversation what to say when you don't know what to say so you can check it out to learn more about this technique coming on to tip number 6 learn to use paraphrases paraphrases now what is it paraphrasing is simply using another word or another sentence when you are stuck in a thought so if you don't know a word and if you're unable to catch a word to say something to describe something don't just freeze try to remember some other word use a synonym of the word or explain the thing in simpler words suppose you can't think and remember the word frustrated and you want to say that i am frustrated instead of just freezing you can say in simpler language you can say i'm feeling upset because it didn't go well so instead of just freezing trying to remember the word frustrated use simple words to say the thing now tip number 7 is focus on clarity over perfection don't try to be too perfect remember communication is not about impressing the other person or using bombastic ostentatious fancy words in your speech trying to impress the other person no communication is not about that communication is about putting your thought across so that the other person understands it well it's okay if you commit some mistakes as long as the other person is able to understand eventually you'll perfect those mistakes also as you practice more so don't let certain grammar mistakes or your sentence structures hamper your conversations so you'll become perfect over a period of time and feel free to make the mistakes as long as you are understood tip number 8 is the most important tip that i feel that has helped me as an esl speaker learn how to speak the language better is to practice shadow technique now shadow technique is trying to repeat what you hear from the speaker you can play a conversation a podcast or a movie pause it and try to repeat and mimic the speaker whatever he said in the same tone with the same rhythm and same pronunciation try to mimic the native speakers that will boost your speaking skill your pronunciation it works wonderfully on your pronunciation on your intonation even on your expression of a language so this is the most powerful way to mimic native speech patterns and improve pronunciation now tip number 9 is to ask questions in english now to engage in conversations you should learn to start asking questions to the other person as well so start asking questions like what do you think about this how do you think it works or try to give a compliment and then try to get a response out of it what do you think i should do next about this so asking questions in conversation make them engaging the other person responds the other person will ask you some more question which will force you to respond so this is how you build on conversations so building on conversation engaging in conversations is important to start speaking fluently and spontaneously tip number 10 the most important tip stay consistent in your learning and set small challenges for yourself yes even if you commit mistakes even if you fumble and you there will be times when you feel demotivated that you have worked hard and still you ended up like this in the conversation which was very crucial to you but then do not get demotivated do not lose heart with every mistake that you make you are learning something new stay consistent with your practice of the language and you will surely reach the goals and do not set 
higher goals for yourself set small everyday goals for yourself that you can achieve easily and pat yourself on your back every day as you achieve those small goals small goals often lead to bigger success so instead of just giving up not achieving higher goals set up small smaller goals try to achieve them and gain confidence so that is all that i had to say about how to learn to speak spontaneously in english if you like this lesson give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel don't forget to share this video with your friends i'll see you next week with another lesson till then happy learning